Well, it's about time that I finally remake my cave tutorial, and this time I'm going to do it in a more beginner friendly way, so you can follow along. And I will also be using Smartbone 1 for it. So I've got the rig now, and let's move to making a cave. So let's start off by adding a plane, rotate it on X by 90 degrees, and position it around where the cave would be. Now go into the edit mode. Oh, I should also enable screencast keys. So now go into the edit mode and add few loop cuts. Around 12 should be good. Same with the other axes. This one I'm going to do 7. You can also just subdivide the plane, but we don't need that much geometry on the X axis. Now go to the edge selection and enable proportional editing right here. Then select every few of the edges by holding Alt. And just move them outwards. Like so. Then just select the top edge and scale it down with a bigger circle like this. Then go to the face selection mode, select everything and shade it smoothly. And now while having this, we need to make a pin group for the cloth simulation. And the cloth simulation is going to be an optional step. You don't really have to do it because you can just deform the mesh by hand if it's easier for you. But anyway, select the top edge again. Go to the vertex groups and just add a new group and just name this one pin group. Then press on assign to assign the edges to the pin group. Now if I deselect it and press on select, you're gonna see that it's going to select these edges right here again. But now for the cloth simulation, you go into the physics properties and press on cloth. And in the cloth settings, you can add more vertex mass and we can mess around with the stiffness settings later. But first we need to go to the collisions tab that's right here on the bottom and enable set collisions. But now if you press spacebar, you can see that the simulation is going to be running, but we don't have the pin group assigned yet. So we need to go to the shape and set the pin group as the pin group that we made previously. So now if you play the simulation, it's going to hold onto the pin group at the top like this. And if you don't have the simulation running, that means you have duplicate vertices. So you need to go into the edit mode again, select the vertex selection, then select everything and then press M to match everything by distance. And then it should say right here at the bottom that it removed some vertices. And now if you play the simulation, it should be all good. So yeah, you could leave the cape like this, or you could also mess around the settings, like the changing the collision quality to five, changing the self collision distance, maybe not too much. And also you can navigate through the simulation by doing the arrow keys. You can go back and forward the arrow keys or go to the start and the end by pressing shift. Doing shift and left arrow is going to reset the simulation and that can allow you for changing the settings right here. I could let's say change the tension, maybe add more vertex mass, somewhere around three should be good. There is also the shear and bending. But don't add too much bending because the whole thing is just going to be stiff like this. But now once you get the shape that you want, like I said, you can navigate through the simulation with the arrow keys. For me, this frame is alright. So now I just need to go to the object, apply and then visual geometry to mesh. So right now, if I go to the edit mode, it's going to be a default mesh like this one. And I could also do some manual fixing right here, like adding this edge. With the proportional editing enable, I can just move it out right there. And now we need to go into the modifiers tab, because this is a plane and not a solid object. And just add a solidify modifier. And then just change the thickness to like 0.3 or 0.4. And don't add too much because it's going to create artifacts like right here. So this is going to be good. And then we just apply the modifier. And right now, if you don't want the cape to be smooth like this, you can go to the object properties and select auto smooth. And I'm going to disable the cavity and you can smooth it at a higher degree on something like this. Like I said, you can make whatever you want and just change the value to whatever you like or feel like it's right. In my case, I'm just going to leave it the smooth, but yeah. Now we need to add an armature. So we do shift A and then select the armature and we'll have this bone right here. We can scale it down and rotate it on X by 180 degrees. And now we can go into the edit mode from the, from the armature and we'll have this bone right here. Later on to set up smart bone, you can have everything extend from one bone, like I did in my flag video, because this is going to be a root bone, or you can have multiple ones by doing shift D to duplicate them. And you can have all sides of the cape just going out from them individually, 
And if you expand the armature, you need to make sure that these are the root bones. And every time you extrude from one of the points, another bone is going to appear down in the hierarchy. You can see this is the bone 02. And under its true hierarchy, it has another bone that's going out. You don't want to have anything like this. You don't want to add root bones over and over again because it's not going to work. So always make sure that you are correctly expanding them. Now I can also go to the object data in the armature and under the viewport display select in front to always see the bones so it's easier for you to expand them. And we just want to add bones so they go down with the flow of the cape and we can add around 3 or 4 or maybe more if you want more detail going down from one root bone. And you can also expand multiple ones from the same point, like this. If you want, you can even have something like this. But remember that more bones also means more performance, so just don't add too many of them. And now when having the armature, we need to select the mesh, in our case it's the cape, and then select the armature while holding shift, so you will see that the cape is highlighted, as well as the armature. So now we need to parent the mesh to the armature, so we do Ctrl P to set parent to. If you selected them wrong, let's say you selected the armature first and then the mesh, and hit Ctrl P, you're not gonna have the option to parent them with the weights, with the armature deform. So select the mesh, then the armature, hit Ctrl P, and here under the armature deform, select with automatic weights, so you'll see that the plain mesh is now under the armature mature object. And that means it's parented correctly. And now we need to do some weight painting. So we need to select the mesh. Here we can hide the armature and go into the weight paint mode. So now in the weight paint we have the names of the bones with the assigned weights right here in the vertex groups. This is the root bone right here. We don't really care about the root bones because they won't be moving. But what we care about are the bones that go from under them. So like this bone 008. We don't want to have a lot of weight on the top right here. This top would need to be basically none. And we don't want to have any high weight in this area also. So what we can do is set the strength to like 0.3. And just draw over it like this. And just go through the bones to see which one is at the top. This bone is the root bone right here. So the next one is going to be this one. So I can just cover it like this. Also don't forget to do it from the other side, like I just did. Let me go back to here. The O2 is another root. So I just want to remove it from the next one. And like I said, the top needs to have non-weight, so you can go into the edit mode, go into one of the side views, press Z and select wireframe, and then just go to the face selection mode and select these, and select these faces at the top right here. Okay, so I messed up this part and had to re-record it, but I will still include it in the video so you don't make the same mistake. You shouldn't remove the whole thing here, because the cape is going to look like this. What you can do instead is either remove just the top or only these faces right here on the top of the cape. And then in the weight paint, instead of this bone basically having no affection on this area, it would basically be just something like this instead. This is just an example, doesn't really have to be like this, but you get the idea. And press on remove while going through all of these bones right here. So remove and when you hover over the groups, you can use arrow keys to navigate. 
and you need to do it manually so remove from this one and just go like this through every single one of them you could also see just which bones have what weight but you would have to select the bone then search for the bone on the list like this one then go to the next one right here and that would take more time but overall your groups should just look like this now we can go back to the object mode and just unhide everything to do last checks. Now if everything is alright, you can hide the dummy and just like last time select the mesh, arcade, then the armature, then go to file, export and then FBX and to export them with the armature you need to select on selected objects and the object type I have everything selected but the two main things you need to have are the armature and the mesh. Then you can change the scale to 0.05, change Z to forward, then apply transforms. In the geometry if you have any modifiers you can apply them. In the armature we can select only deform bones and don't add leaf bones and we don't have any animation so we can deselect this and then just hit export FBX. By the way, if you are finding this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. And also, if you want to support me, you can do so through channel memberships, where you get these perks on my channel and my Discord server, as well as access to my first asset pack. But anyways, and then in studio, do import 3D, navigate to our file, and this is going to be our mesh. And you need to make sure that it has the armature with the bones right here. And if you don't see the bones, that means you didn't export it properly. So make sure to double check everything I did previously. But you basically need to have the armature and the mesh. I don't need to upload the object to Roblox, so I'm going to deselect that and just hit on import. And this is where we have our cape. And now I'm going to just build a rig, a blocky one, to just show you. So this is going to be the starter character. And in the cape, we don't need the initial poses and the animation controller, we just need the mesh, that we can rename to cape. You will also see that it has the bones in the explorer here. So now we need to weld it to our character. So I'm just going to get the position of the torso. And just put it inside of the cape's C-frame. Then I'm going to reset the pivot orientation and just scale the model down while holding ALT and just move it so it fits the character you can also scale it down like this but don't do it too much because it might cause issues with the armature but now you just move the mesh inside of the character model then disable the collision on it add a weld constraint to the cape select part 0 as the torso and then part 1 as the cape you will see the weld right here. And now just for visuals, I'm going to generate a material from the AI generated materials. Generate a dark fabric material. Select like this one. Set it as this color and then apply it to the fabric based material. So now we just need to apply the smart bone on the cave. And I already have the smart bone runtime and the smart bone module. If you don't know how to set them up, you can watch my video right here. But basically, we need to go into the view and then enable tag editor and then add a smart bone tag into the cape. So while having the cape selected you just select the tag and the tag is going to appear right here at the bottom in the tags. Then you need to add an attribute called roots which is a string attribute and put in the name of every root bone so that means these three bones into the roots attribute and separate them only by a comma like this. Now to just demonstrate how it works on the cape, I'm going to put the starter character inside of starter player and I'm going to do a playtest. So we have our character with the cape right here, but we need to adjust a few more settings. And we adjust these settings by adding attributes. I can close the tag editor now. And these are the attribute settings from the GitHub. So you can add a dumping attribute, which is a number, and change it to like 0.5. Then also add another number attribute called stiffness, change it to like 0.4. And of course you don't have to set them to these values, but you can mess around with them later. Same with inertia. And then elasticity. We can playtest it again. So yeah, now we can see that the cape behaves a lot better than previously. Yeah, as you can see, it's also colliding with the body, but collision and axis limitation is something that was implemented in Smartbone 2. But I don't want to do a Smartbone 2 tutorial yet because it's not fully released, and there might be stuff that's going to be added later or just changed. So I'm going to make tutorials on Smartbone 2 in the future. But that's going to be everything for today, so thank you guys for watching and see ya!